Hi besties, welcome back to the channel. My name is Gigi. Let's talk about some horror movies. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start off by talking about the one I watched yesterday. Uh, and then I'm going to go watch another one. And then add to this video and you'll get a double feature. So there you go. Making up for last week. Sorry about that guys. Um, so... The movie I watched already, though, is called Ghost Stories, and it's, a, of course, a Netflix movie. Although this one really is a Netflix movie, I just didn't watch it on there. Some of the movies that we've watched are not, like, commissioned by Netflix or paid for by Netflix. So, I just... And, of course, Netflix doesn't know me. This video is not sponsored by Netflix. This is not an ad for Netflix. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so I watched Ghost Stories, and... Um, I guess there used there was a another movie that they did called Lust Stories, which I have not seen, but this one was just came out in January this month, January this month, um, and there's four directors. It's an anthology, and it's four different stories. I am not going to do well. Um, Anurag Kashyap, Dubakar. Banjuri, Ban, Ban, Banerji, Banerji, Zoya Akhtar, and Karan Joyhar. It is an English, or English, it's an Indian movie in um, half English, half Hindi, and it was very interesting. Um, it wasn't scary at all. There was nothing scary about this at all. Um, there were moments of tension. There were moments that I felt confused, like I didn't really understand what the story was trying to say to me. And there were moments that I was really enjoying it. So for the most part, I actually really enjoyed the movie. Um, it kept me going the whole time. Each story had its own little flavor and its own little, little tale to tell. And they didn't go together at all. It wasn't like they were telling a running story. Each story is an individual story. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to tell you about two of them real quick. Um, I'm not going to break down all four of them. I'm just going to rate the movie on a whole. I'm going to tell you about the two stories that stuck with me the most. The first story is the first story I'm going to talk about. And it's about a girl who's a nurse and she is... <sighs> She's having an affair with a married man. But she is, and she's trying to get him to come to this place where she is taking care of an elderly woman. She's, this is a new position for her, and she didn't even get to meet the nurse, the other nurse that was there. They, everyone left this old woman home alone and just assumed this lady would show up. I'm blown away by that. She gets there and she starts taking care of the lady. And she spends the weekend there. Finally, her boyfriend comes. Her boyfriend, who is never going to leave his wife. Ladies, even if he does leave his wife, he's a cheater. Gonna cheat on you too. Stop. Stop chasing men who are shit. But that's what she's doing. She's also a little bit of a shithead herself, though, because she's stealing from her employer. So maybe she kind of gets what she gets, but whatever. Plus, you know what? She's trying to destroy somebody's marriage. That is pretty fucked up. So, anyway, it comes down to the end of the mo of the story. And basically, she keeps hearing weird things, too. Like this dragging in the hallway. Never gets up to investigate it. Never checks to see if her bedridden patient is okay. She just lays in the bed like a fucking weirdo. So, there was that. She was irritating me. Clearly, I think that's why it stuck with me so much. But at the end of the, the thing, she calls the police because she thinks that something crazy is going on and she cannot find um, the son. The, the, the mother is the one she's taking care of. She keeps saying, no, my son is here. My son is here. Go find my son. He's hiding. He hides in the kitchen. She goes to the kitchen and the woman that she just was talking to in the bedroom is dead in the pantry. So she calls the police. 
and the police come and the coroner is there and he's like this chick's been dead for like three days she clearly drug herself in the kitchen looking for food no one's been here for her for five days because the previous nurse left without making sure the son came the son was supposed to show up he never came and this woman died before this woman ever got there she's been taking care of a ghost so it was creepy and weird, but it wasn't actually scary. There was nothing scary about it. Now, the other one that stuck with me, and you would think maybe it stuck with me because it's the last story, but that's not why. It stuck with me because, oh, wait. No, I have to tell you about a third one, too. I'm going to tell you about the last story first because this third one is the one that was actually the most chilling to me. The um, Why can't I remember the second one? Or was that the, etch? Eh, I'm going to stop now. Um, <sighs> the last story was about a dude who comes to this village. He's got some business there. He's there for a meeting or some shit. And it's called Small Town. And he gets to Small Town and it's freaking destroyed. It's like a war zone, right? And no one is around. Except he stumbles across this boy wearing like a motorcycle helmet. And he says, stand still. Stand still or you'll die. So the dude stands still and then he says, follow me. And so he follows him and they run into this, the place where he's living with this little girl and they're the only actual people left alive. Everyone in another town called Big Town, in, led by the little girl in the room's father, came and ate everyone in small town. And these two kids are the only actual humans left in the town and they and this can be a short short story they are they're barely surviving there with all of these i guess zombies but the zombies are led by this dude that looks like the cowardly lion's not so cowardly cousin and I don't understand how that came to be. And there's never an explanation to how he morphed into this thing while the rest of them all do have fangs but are just still looking like humans. And the thing is they can't see you unless you move or talk. So it's very much bird box or some shit. Uh, not bird box so much as a quiet place but with zombies. So it was a weird little story. And the very end of it though was so interesting. It was so good because the cowardly lion dude, the dude, okay, there's a brutal scene in this where the cowardly lion dude eats his daughter. It is fucking horrible. But then the dude, the, the, dude, the adult dude that's still a, a, a human, and the little boy decide they have to leave and they rub some of her blood on them because the thing is they don't the only people they don't eat are the people who eat so if you're a zombie they won't eat you if you're not a zombie they eat you so they rub all that stuff on there put it on their teeth and stuff to make it seem like they ate the girl and they start getting through the town and the cowardly lion dude is not having it and he sort of screams in the boy's face the boy takes a chunk then everybody looks at the other dude and starts chasing him. And that's how it ended. So it was pretty creepy. Now, the one that chilled me to the fucking bone. And honestly, I cannot remember what the fourth story was about. I'm so sorry. Go watch the movie. It's really worth one a one-time watch. It really is. Um, the one that chilled me, though, is about this woman who babysits her nephew. Her husband can't stand this child. And I'm not exactly sure. At first, you don't really get why, I think. And it seems... I'll get to it. So, the woman is pregnant. And the little boy asks his dad, when Auntie has the baby, will she still love me? And he's like, of course your Auntie will love you. She lo she's your Auntie. And I do want to, as an aside, just as a quick aside, every single adult man and woman was called auntie by everyone. 
in every story and I absolutely loved that. I was like, is that a custom in India that everybody's auntie and uncle? I love that. So anyway, um, the little boy will draw pictures of the, of him and the aunt and with, she would have the baby in her stomach and he would draw on the baby with a black crayon real hard, scratching it out and she would start to have pain. And after that happens, you see her go upstairs to a nursery filled with dolls. And she calls them all her precious babies. And it makes me, and there's like maybe 20 dolls in there. And I'm like, is this kid making her miscarry all these babies? And sure enough, he, it keeps drawing her and crossing out the baby and she loses the baby. And she also keeps having really weird dreams. Um, and then after she loses the baby, she's in, she's in the nursery, covered in blood, naked as fuck, babbling to herself and playing with one of the dolls. And the little kid is in the backseat of his dad's car going, ha ha ha, now auntie will only ever love me. And I'm like, Even now, just saying it, it chills me. And that kid was so creepy looking. So he was the perfect choice for that role. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop this one. Um, on a whole, the movie, I'm going to give it a three. It's well worth a watch. I would totally check it out. I'm not sure I would seek it out again, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'll be back in just a moment, and we'll talk about another movie. We are forward in the future several hours and we are about to talk about a second movie to make up again and to make up for last week. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I watched today on Netflix a movie called Siren. And once I got partway through the movie and realized and saw the girl from behind, I realized that I had known this movie was out there. I just didn't realize that it was like a sequel to one of the stories in really more, more of a prequel actually, to one of the movies in the VHS series, um, or one of the stories. I forget if it's VHS or VHS 2. Um, Let me see if I can just happen to see this. Um, no. Uh, it's, if you've seen the VHS movies, um, there is a, a story where some guys are out screwing around and they meet some chicks and they go back to their hotel and proceed to party. And one of the girls doesn't like any of the guys except one. And she keeps telling him, I like you. I like you. And when one of the other guys tries to get with her, she starts to let him, but then she fucks him up. She kills him. And the dude that she likes, try he actually gets out and she chases him, but her face, like, it opens, okay? And I'm not going to go any further into it. I just wanted to really make sure you understood which one I was talking about. This movie, Siren, seems to be a prequel to that. The movie opens up at what appears to be a church or something. And, yeah, I want to say it's a church. And a man drives up. He gets out of the car. He's, like, totally ringed up. He's got all these rings. And he's wearing a really cool hat and outfit and glasses. And he's got a cool little... Uh, beard stash situation and um that person is Justin Wellborn he plays Mr. Nix and the person who that the chick whose face opens she's played by Hannah Fireman and she's Lily which I don't think you ever know her name in the other VHS movie so I've never looked up the credits to that as far as I know so I don't I don't know. I just had a bowl of ramen, so I'm a little <laughs> gassy. Um, so 
it opens up with Mr. Nix going into this church. There's a cop there, and he goes, um, Sheriff, he addresses him as Sheriff Boone's. Boone, not Boone's. And he, um, sorry, all of a sudden I felt like I had something in my eye. <clears throat> and I'm also wheezing a little bit. This is a great video, you guys. Really, really stellar performance on my part. Anyway, he goes in there and he sees what's going on. And the cop is like, I guess they were Satanists or something. And he goes, no, they were amateurs. Mr. Nix does. And then he's looking around at stuff. And the the cop like grunts or something and the light moves. Because it's really dark in there. They've just got a flashlight. And he asks for the light back. And then the light, the flashlight hits the ground. He turns around and the cop falls. And his face is like half gone. And then... He starts looking around and he does this cute little move where he kind of goes like this and looks to his side and I'm like, it stuck with me. There was something about his mannerisms and stuff that just really, really stuck with me. I just really resonated with the way that the actor played this character. Uh, excuse me. You know, gotta, every time, every time. So he sees what appears to be a young girl, but you know it's not a young girl because what had happened in the church is some idiots summoned something and couldn't hold it. And what they couldn't hold was this little girl, the face opener, Lily. Cut to many years later and some kids, some young men are out on a, um, like a bachelor party trip. Okay. And they're going to Atlantic City because it's supposed to have an underground party scene. But, you know, you have to know somebody to get in touch with the underground scene. And you're not going to find about, out about it at the first skanky bar you stop at. So you you got to know someone, right? But they kind of get lucky. Okay, there's a lot of air quotes in this. They get lucky and a guy says, I know where a place, great music, dripping with pussy. If you can't handle this kind of language, don't watch this movie because that's exactly what he says. Um, something about dripping with pussy, music is great. I think that's what he said. Um, so they go. Uh, and there's the groom, the groom's brother, the groom's best friend, and another friend. Um, they get there, and you know right away. I mean, first of all, they never should have gone with this guy. You never go with a guy. You never go. Okay, I'm sorry, you just don't. But they go with the guy, and they get there, and... <sighs> no, Papa. No, come. He was about to start barking. There was probably a cat in the window out there. On my um, fence in the back, they walk on there because it's wood, and there's a you know, a uh, two by four on the back holding everything together and they'll walk on that. Okay, so <sighs> once they get there, Mr. Nix comes out and he says that the groom can have a special groom thing. I forget exactly what he said. A special time, a special situation. Um, and he just needs to go through here. There's a chicken there for him. And the guys are all, you got to do it. You're not married yet. And the one dude is like, you got to do this for me, man. Come on. So he goes back there. But we all know he's, he's not interested in anybody. He loves his girl. And that is established early on. So he goes back there. And there, it, there she is. Face girl. But she's behind glass. He's locked in a room. She's locked in a room. She starts singing him a song. And he like has a... Uh, like a situ like a moment you know just this crazy thing comes over him a vision sort of and then once he can get out of the room he goes to see that she's locked in her room and he decides he's going to break her out um which i think is how she ends up getting out for the next movie for the one that came before vhs that's how she's out right because I always wondered, where did this chick come from? Now we know. 
So, um, although you still don't know where she's summoned from. I mean, that's never revealed. I don't know where she came from, but she was summoned here. Um, so he gets his friend and breaks her out. He sends his brother and one of the other guys out to get the car started and come get them. And he takes another friend, one of the other dudes, and goes to break her out. Um, he gets her out, but they don't really, like everybody's, there's guards everywhere. They're not getting out. But she's badass, right? They don't know she's just a chick. And she smelled him when she came out of the room. She likes him. So, um... Him and his friends get get separated. He's trying to get away from her because he's starting to realize he made a mistake. Um, Mr. Nix gets a hold of his friend, his best friend, and starts torturing him. The other two are trying to get him um, to the groom, but they can't. What is the groom's name? I don't remember. Jonah. Jonah. So, and Jonah is, the groom, Jonah, is the one that she likes. Um, <coughs> so, she does catch up to him, and she basically takes what she wants, okay? There's a little rapey, rapey situation that goes on. And then he, I don't know how he gets away from her, if she just let him go, but he... He goes back to get all of his friends. He can, he, not everybody comes back. Okay. Um, he gets away. He tells her basically, I can't, this is no bueno. I have to go home. And I don't know why she lets him go, but she does. But then cut to a year later and, and it never really is explained why she let him go, but she did. Maybe she wasn't in season or something. I don't know, but I think she wants him to make babies with her. Um, and of course, she kills Mr. Nix. She's not having that at all. But cut to a year later, and he's there with his new wife, which her name's Eva. And um, they've been married for a year. It's been a little more than a year, just a few days more than a year. And... <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, it's their one year anniversary. And so they're about to get busy. She's drinking some um, champagne. She's in the living room waiting for him. And he's in the bedroom getting ready, uh, like getting cleaned up and stuff. And he hears Lily singing. And he looks outside, but then he hears something behind him and looks behind him and his wife is there. So they get busy. Then he gets up and goes in the kitchen to get a snack or a drink or something. And when he comes out, his wife is in the living room sleeping on the couch. And he goes, honey, how did you get out? How, when, how long have you been out here? And she doesn't say anything. And then he looks toward the bedroom and out walks Lily. And he's like, fuck me. And she runs up to him. Her wings spread because I forgot to mention she could fly. Her wings spread, she picks him up, crashes through the window, and flies away as the wife is going, Wah! It was so good, you guys. Honestly, I liked this better than I liked the VHS story, which is, it's my favorite of the VHS stories. So, if you've not seen that, it's worth sitting through the other stories for, because not all of them are great. I'm on the fence about the VHS ones, but this movie, I'm giving it a three and a half. I'm, I'm tempted to give it a four, but you've got to work really hard to get a four from me. So we're going to keep it at a three and a half. I like this movie. I think I would probably watch it again. Highly recommend it, you guys. Definitely check it out. Besties, thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate your time and attention to this channel. You rock out aloud. Sorry again about last week, and I will try to do better in the future. Mwah.